questão da conexão. Estamos no ar. So, welcome to Inside SP and to us 2021. The last session of our third day is extremely important for us, and we are happy to be able to broadcast it on YouTube. This initiative aims at expanding the reach of Inside SP and to us beyond the scope of the school. The panel was designed to discuss the challenges and the perspectives of science diplomacy in Latin America and the Caribbean region. And the panel is composed by Dr. Virgilio Almeida, head of Tuas Lacrep, Secretary Pedro Ivo Ferraz da Silva, head of science, technology, and innovation at the Embassy of Brazil in Berlin, Ambassador Afonso Masso, Executive Secretary of the International Relations Secretariat of the State of Sao Paulo, Secretary Patricia Ellen da Silva, Secretary of Economic Development of the State of Sao Paulo, and will be moderated by Professor Dr. Amancio Jorge de Oliveira, the Deputy Director of the Museu Paulista in Sao Paulo. Professor Oliveira, the floor is now yours. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Gabriela. It's a big pleasure to be here today. Uh, so let's let's go to the let's start the the last panel of this week. Uh, science diplomacy in Latin America and Caribbean challenges and perspectives. As Gabriela, Gabriela mentioned, the panel is being broadcast uh, on YouTube. Uh, we have the privilege to count with outstanding outstanding panelists who will give. And at the same time, an uh, overview and a new perspective about the regional dimension of science uh, diplomacy. Uh, it's uh, uh, an intriguing question uh, if he inside uh, SP should be a regional or, or maybe a global South school or just a global one without any uh, regional bias. So this is a, a question that you can uh, discuss a little bit uh, during this, this panel based, of course, uh, in the panelists that you have this, uh, this week. So thank you very much, Professor uh, Virgilio Almeida, Sec Secretary Pedro Ivo Ferraz da Silva, Ambassador Afonso Masso, and uh, we have a big honor to count also with Secretary Patricia Ellen da Silva, who you'll get in a little bit later. So please, uh, Professor uh, Virgilio, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amancio. Uh, good afternoon and good evening to everyone. It's really a pleasure uh, to be in this panel that concludes the first week of uh, Insight and to us. First, I want also to greet Secretary Patricia, on behalf of whom I greet all other members of the panel. I would like also to congratulate all the participants of the school and workshop and express my compliments to the organizers of Inside SP School and to us workshop in particular, University of Sao Paulo, to us, uh, La Crepe, uh, the Brazilian Academy of Science and uh, uh, the uh, American Association for Advancement of Science. Uh, both the school and the workshop have been a tremendous success with more than 140 online participants from all over the world. It, it's great to see all the faces in, 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 on, my, on my screen. As a member of the Brazilian Academy of Science and head of the TOAS LACREP, uh, the focus of my talk is on Latin America and the Caribbean region. The three days of the workshop have emphasized the importance of promoting scientific collaboration within Latin America and the Caribbean region. Latin America and, and, and Caribbean countries include resources that are key for the future of humanity 
and for the sustainable development of the planet that need to be preserved. They include areas that are rich in species diversity, culture and language of indigenous people, history, art and music. However, the region faces immense challenges that need the contribution of science to solve problems such as poverty, inequalities, envir environment protection, urban and healthcare problems, shortage of qualified human capital for the needs of modern economies, and threats to democracies. Science can be an important resource to improve life in Latin America and the Caribbean region. Examples of science resources that are available for the region include new vaccines, genomics, new materials, big data, and artificial intelligence. In order to boost science initiatives in the region, we need collaboration between scientists and diplomats. We need more collaboration among the countries of the region. Due, due to the complexity of the problems that we have to face in Latin America and the Caribbean, I see science uh, as an instrument that will boost the collaboration between diplomacy and government in different ways. First, science can help to diagnose complex problems that we have in our region. Science can help to detect social issues. In the first case, diagnostic problems in, in the region, we can point out the threats to the environment in the Amazonia uh, region uh, that uh, has have been pointed out by uh, satellites and analysis of uh, scientists. Also, the, the pandemics brings the importance of science to detect uh, social aspects of the, of the COVID-19 dissemination. Science can also be a helpful resource to the process of agenda setting. Science can help to show society what are, are, are key problems that need discussion uh, among countries. More specifically, science can contribute with, with advices to the formulation of foreign policy objectives. And diplomacy can facilitate international science collaboration. We have seen the key role of science during the pandemics. And we are also aware of the work of scientists pointing out the destruction of biodiversity in Latin America. So these two are, are, are examples of the importance of science for, for society, for the different countries, and for the future of the planet. I think this school and workshop are important steps towards the collaboration between scientists and diplomats so that the countries of our region can enjoy the benefits of scientific progress. I hope you all, participants from different countries, from different parts of the world, you, you all enjoy the second week of the, of the school and go home with new ideas for improving the collaboration between countries, between scientists, and between institutions. Thank you. Have a, uh, a good weekend. Thank you, Virgilia, uh, Professor Virgilia. I hope this is this just a uh, first time of, of our partnerships. Uh, I, I hope you can keep going with this partnership in the future. I hope so. Thank you very much. We're, we're very happy with this partnership. So. Uh, Professor Vigilio talk uh, a little bit about the science. Let's let's hear a little bit about more about diplomacy with Secretary Pedro Pedro Ivo, and then you pass the word to Ambassador. So, Pedro Ivo, please. 
Thank you very much, uh, Professor Amancio. I would like to greet uh, Secretary Patricia Ellen, Ambassador Masso, and Professor Virgilio, our, uh, my uh, partners here at this uh, panel. I also uh, take this opportunity to greet again the Institute of International Relations, uh, the Institute of, of Advanced Studies of the University of Sao Paulo, and of course our great partners for this edition, the World Academy of Science, the Brazilian Academy of Science, and the AAAS. Uh, we have seen in this first three days of our school that the practice of uh, science diplomacy is not new. Uh, on the first day, Professor Laerci has uh, told us about how the exchange of ideas uh, among different uh, cultures has led to the development of astronomy, for example. Uh, Professor Javier Barcons has uh, told us about the creation uh, of the European Southern Observatory in the 60s. Uh, Professor Davidovich uh, yesterday uh, showed in his brilliant presentation many examples, past examples of uh, science diplomacy among them, the Antarctic Treaty from 1959, which is ultimately an international treaty devoted to science. Also today, Ambassador Serge Duarte has uh, enlightened us with his uh, lecture about the Pugwash Conference, which took place already in the late uh, 1950s. So these are all, uh, let's say, examples of uh, uh, practical examples of science diplomacy. However, the concept of science diplomacy is, uh, is new, is actually what is new. And here is where we need to be careful. Um, we uh, normally, those who are company uh, and follow uh, lectures on science diplomacy, uh, normally see that the uh, AAAS, the famous, famous AAAS Royal Society Framework for Science Diplomacy, is uh, seen as the main reference for the definition of science diplomacy. The famous science for diplomacy, diplomacy for science, and science in diplomacy tri triad. Uh, but we need to, to see and bear in mind that it was conceived in a very, in a certain context, it has taken certain priorities take certain objectives into account. And we need to question ourselves, do these priorities actually match the priorities of our own countries, of our own region, or our own reality? So what I want to stress as a representative of a developing economy, as a Latin American and Caribbean representative, is that we need to develop our own concept of science diplomacy. We need to have our own interpretation of science diplomacy. And what we, we need to define is the goals that we want science diplomacy to achieve. Because science diplomacy is a tool. It's not an end in itself, but it's a means to an end. So, uh, and uh, this means we need uh, to think and to start think about science diplomacy strategically and not reactively as we it ha has been done so far. And I'm very glad to see the recent developments in our region, the, see the recent developments in developing economies. And CIDSP, of course, is a great example and a great uh, space of debate where we can exchange ideas and uh, also start conceiving these, let's say, definitions or these strategic goals for science diplomacy according to our priorities. It's also, we need to, I'm very happy to see these recent developments by the uh, establishment of formal and uh, also informal networks of science diplomacy in our region, also in South Asia, in Asia, in Africa. So I think I'm very positive about the development. And also from uh, national governments. So yesterday we had a very interesting uh, presentation from Vice Minister Cristancho of Colombia, 
who has laid out the plan, a very strategic uh, plan on science diplomacy for his country. And uh, I'm very glad that other countries are doing the same. So just to conclude, I want to stress that importance that we need to have a very autonomous, independent and critical view on science diplomacy and link it very closely to our reality, to our priorities. I look forward to the next week of uh, Inside SP and the TWAS, where we will not only talk about science diplomacy and also about innovation diplomacy. And innovation diplomacy, yes, has a concept that was conceived within uh, developing economy. And we are glad to discuss this in further detail. Thank you so much. Back to you, Professor Amansu. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary Pedro Ivo. Let's move, let's pass the word to Ambassador Alfonso Masso, Executive Secretary of International Relations, the State of Sao Paulo. Thank you very much for your presence, Ambassador. Thank you. Uh, warm greetings to you all. <clears throat> Boa tarde a todos. I wish to thank Professor Amancio Oliveira, excuse me, <clears throat> for the invitation to participate in this forum. It is a pleasure to share some thoughts with the Brazilian and international academies. As a career ambassador with some decades acting in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Brasilia and in several posts abroad, and today as Executive Secretary for International Affairs of the State of Sao Paulo, I wish to convey my conceptual and practical view on subnational diplomacy which also includes science diplomacy, science diplomacy. To start, I will speak a few words about foreign policy at the federal level, and then I'll talk about the subnational level. The foreign policy of a country, as you know, is a national policy, a policy of state. Therefore, it is of national and international projection. Its priority goals are the permanent national interests, such as national security, natural resources, trade, the well being of citizens, the good image of the country abroad, among others, and also circumstantial interests, since each historical moment determines the diplomatic strategy to be followed. And here enters also science diplomacy, according to the times we live. A foreign policy should be a fluid, although firm, dialogue with other nations and executed with pragmatism, always avoiding public actions, attitudes, or comments that could create situations contrary to our national interests. Claudio Acquaviva, the superior gen general of the Society of Jesus at the end of the 16th century, beginning of the 17th century, coined a Latin phrase which describes very well what I said. Quote, suaviter in modo, fortiter in re, which means gentle in manner, firm in the action. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Brasilia and our diplomatic and consular agents abroad articulate on a bilateral basis our foreign policy and on a multilateral basis in international fora and organizations. It is an art and a permanent effort of negotiation and representation concerning the institutional and personal dialogue of the diplomatic agent with foreign authorities. Moreover, diplomatic agents provide continuous information about countries in which they are working and here, I must distinguish information from news. News are facts of common knowledge. Diplomatic information is always strategic, assessed by the diplomatic agent to be used immediately, but mainly in the medium and long terms. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Brasilia establishes the Brazilian foreign policy. On the other hand, at the subnational level, the state of Sao Paulo designs and executes a policy of international cooperation in compliance with a strategy 
based on priorities of the state government, always respecting the international commitments to which Brazil has formally agreed. Given the geographical, cultural, and economic peculiarities of subnational states, they have specific strategic priorities, and these priorities can recommend a dialogue or a more intense partnership with this or that country, province, international organization, or network or state governments, of state governments. This is what justifies subnational diplomacy, which must be dynamic, pragmatic and proactive to seek and exchange opportunities of cooperation also in science and technology. Given the current characteristics of the Brazilian economy with a domestic market much more expressive than its foreign trade and in the face of high unemployment, we can say that the international agenda of subnational states and its diplomacy are not ancillary elements. They are a must in the promotion of trade and foreign investments, since these are scarce at the domestic level. Our Secretariat of International Affairs is new, and its creation translates the relevance that Governor João Doria assigns to international cooperation in different fields, such as investments, trade, culture, innovation, technology, science, private-public partnership, public concessions, and infrastructure works. Such a diplomatic agenda, multifaceted, will always have as target the economic progress, the generation of employment, and the search for solutions in setting our state of Sao Paulo even more in the fourth industrial revolution and promoting the welfare of its citizens. In this connection, we have permanent dialogue with the consular network in Sao Paulo, one of the largest in the world, and with the embassies in Brasilia. It is always relevant to provide updated information on opportunities at a regional level. Therefore, the Secretariat, together with the state-owned company Invest Sao Paulo and other secretariats, organize official work missions abroad. In the last two years before the beginning of the pandemic, the governor made nine missions abroad, Davos in Switzerland, invited by the World Economic Forum, to the United States, to the United Kingdom, to China, where we inaugurated our first international office in Shanghai, to Germany, to Japan, and to the United Arab Emirates, where we opened the second trade office of the state of Sao Paulo abroad in Dubai. Last year, together with other secretariats, we participated in the elaboration of the Reset Plan 21-22, a plan for the economic revival of the state of Sao Paulo, with a portfolio of projects for investments, mainly in infrastructure. One of the axes of this plan is internationalization. For this, and due to the impossibility of performing international missions, the Secretariat organized several virtual roadshows to present the plan and the firm political will of the governor with the preservation of the environment, the climate agenda, and the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. I brought to the COP25 in Madrid the governor's message of his commitment to the defense of the environment and of sustainability. And given the growing core importance that the governor assigns to these issues, we intend to actively participate in the COP26 in Glasgow in the United Kingdom. We make clear that Sao Paulo values multilateralism. I would not like to finish these words without mentioning that we have sought to revisit and restructure the international acts that the state of Sao Paulo signed with, our, with other countries. We have chosen memoranda of understanding or umbrella MOUs that offer a concrete framework for cooperation, establishing specific technical working groups. In October 2020, as a follow-up of the visit of the United States of America Secretary of Commerce in 2019, the state of Sao Paulo signed directly with the United States of America, an MOU, establishing cooperation in areas of education, health, science and technology, 
which is the core of this panel, public security, migration, agriculture, and tourism. We had the same approach after the meeting held in Sao Paulo with the French Minister of Foreign Affairs. We agreed on the signing of a new MOU between Sao Paulo and France. And for this purpose, we created seven technical working groups in the areas of science, technology, and innovation, agriculture, trade and investments, infrastructure, education and culture, environmental, environment and health. Last February, the governor signed an addendum term to the MOU between the state of Sao Paulo and the United Kingdom, creating the Sao Paulo UK Climate Hub, a strong joint agenda for cooperation in the transition to a low carbon economy. We also assume the commitment to engage in the race to zero and race to resilience campaigns. I mentioned the strategy of internationalization, but again, I will emphasize the opening of international offices. Besides three offices already running in Shanghai, Dubai, and Munich, we will open a new one in New York next November. Last but not least, I would highlight as an example of the prominence of the state of Sao Paulo in the international scenario, the important partnership between Butata Institute and Sinovac Life Science to manufacture vaccines. And this is strictly scientific. This partnership was initially signed in 2019 before the pandemic during the governor's travel to China, which contemplates technology transfer. Thanks to science in its international action, Sao Paulo has shown its leadership in facing the global sanitary challenges and the Secretariat of International Affairs has had a proactive role in this initiative. In conclusion, I'm very glad to recognize that there is a clear synergy between the concepts of science and innovation diplomacy with the work that has been developed by the state of Sao Paulo in the international affairs. I wish success to you all, and I thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, Ambassador. Uh, it's a pleasure for uh, having you here. And I have to say also, it's a big, big honor for having Secretary Patricia Allen here in this event. It's very important for us. As Vice Director of Museu do Ipiranga, I would say that uh, I would like to, to thank the support of uh, government, uh, João Doria, uh, Secretary Patricia Allen, for efforts to this uh, museum. Maybe ne next, next year you can, you can do the inside in the museum in President's way. Thank you very much, but uh, uh, Secretary, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Amancio. It's an honor to be here with you. I would like also to uh, say hi to our Ambassador Masso. It's a pleasure to be together with him and listening to all the good news and the advancements that we've had in our government uh, in everything related to diplomacy in science and technology not only in our region, but also in connecting Sao Paulo to the world. Uh, fortunately, we are going towards the right way. I wish all the region, all the different states, and especially you know, our country at the national level would be moving towards the, the, same, direction, the same direction. Unfortunately, that is not true. And uh, we see that in how our budget for science and technology is evolving. At the national level, what we see is that the budget is now two thirds lower than the national budget for science and technology two years ago. On the other hand, our budget in Sao Paulo is one third higher than the budget that we had two years ago. So Governor Doria is committed to science and technology in a very clear and concrete way, way to, the extent that today, to the extent that today we have a budget and an ecosystem for science and technology in which we are investing every year more than 14 billion reais. We invest that through our universities, through FAPESP, our research foundation, through our partnership with the technolog technological parks, and also uh, through funding to our startups and to co-investment through public and private partnerships. Uh, we see that uh, science is a priority to our state, uh, not only in terms of investments, 
but also in terms of strategy and the time allocated by our governor. Ambassador Masso described many of the agreements that we closed in the last two years, all the international uh, 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 journeys that we conducted to close these partnerships, to also learn about you know, science ecosystems all over the world. I had the privilege to go with the governor in a mission, uh, Ambassador Masso mentioned China, Dubai, uh, the UK, uh, Germany, uh, but I also was in a mission to California. You know that it was the first time that a governor visited California and it was very exciting to see you know, how happy he was and committed to connecting Sao Paulo to California. And also he gave us the autonomy to start discussing partnerships all over Latin America. So I also was in meetings with Governor Doria and, and, and the government from Chile, from Argentina. Uh, so there is a lot happening uh, simultaneously in our government and also through uh, the work of our universities. Remembering also that Sao Paulo hosts three of the major public universities in Latin America. Our universities are amongst the best universities in the world. And uh, Sao Paulo also hosted a very significant investment in vaccines production to fight COVID. So today we have two vaccines being produced in Sao Paulo, another one being produced in Rio de Janeiro, remembering again, again the relevance of our scientific ecosystem in the region. So this production will benefit not only the state of Sao Paulo, and not only Brazil, but the whole region, because this will make us, allow us to be uh, autonomous in our production. Today, the whole region is depending from uh, products, from the raw material from other countries, from other regions. And that creates a huge disparity between our region and other developed regions around the world. So it's a time for us to be more united than ever, and especially being united on the right side, and the right side is the science side. You know, our earth is not flat, as many people are now saying, and we all know that here. And it's unbelievable that, you know, we need to even mention these types of sentence in an event like this, but we do need to do that. And maybe my last piece of, uh, uh, I would use my, my time here to really uh, call us uh, to, to end with a call for action. You know, it's time for science to be also simple. We need to invest in communication. We need to engage the society. We need to show, you know, to common people, you know, that the right information is the information that is, you know, on the side of this, our science, of our technology. And one simple example of that of two years, two days ago, I could mention all the, the major investments that we are making new inventions, new products, new services, such as the one that we are making the vaccines. We have a program now to allow startups to be hired by the government. IDEAGOV, it's a program. We have with FAPESP, a major program called Science for Development that helps uh, companies to co-invest with universities and institutes for applied research. So we have many good examples of how our ecosystem is really thriving. But I'll give you one example of two days ago. We had a scientist, Professor Jacqueline Góes. You know, she became a Barbie. You know, she, it's the first time that a Barbie doll is represented by a, a scientist. And she's not only a scientist, she's a black woman from Brazil, from our ecosystem in Sao Paulo, who had access to finance and was one of the first groups in the world to work in the decodification of the COVID DNA. These studies are being used all over the world. And now Jacqueline Góes is gonna be known by all the kids in our country. So this is an example how science now will be part of the every day of every kid in our country. And now girls will know that they can become a scientist. So I'll just end my uh, speech here because I was very well represented by Ambassador Masso explaining with like, much more details than I'll do our numbers, our investments, our agreements. 
I will end with that, just giving you, first congratulating all the work that our scientists are you know, doing. Uh, I know everybody's working hard with very few resources, especially in other states, even less so in other countries. The situation, the economic situation is very severe. Sao Paulo is growing. We uh, yesterday shared that you know our uh, forecasts for our GDP are actually going up. Uh, so we will grow 7.8% this year, only behind China and India. Uh, so we will grow, we will include, but we need to share this prosperity and this inclusion. So it's time for us to be connected, to be united, and also to engage the whole society together with us in explaining that science is for the good, that science includes, and that our Earth is very well-rounded. So thank you very much, and I hope you have a good event. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, I appreciate uh, very much the fact that you give an uh, overview about science and diplomacy, but also bring the, the issue of gender in science. It's a, a very important issue also. So uh, we can believe it. You, you can know you, you are a, a agenda very busy. So thank you very much to, to, to come here. Professor Vigilio Almeida, Secretary Pedro Ivo, Ambassador uh, Afonso Masso, thank you, thank you very much for this uh, excellent panel. So we can conclude uh, right now without Q&A. Thank you, and uh, you see you next week.